This is 10 with Zen, a podcast hosted by Helen Woodward, leadership consultant and former head of school improvement at the Department for Education. Brought to you by Zen Educate, each episode features a prominent guest sharing insights and best practice based on their own unique experiences. This could be as a school leader, an SEN specialist, a parent and beyond. If you like the sound of 10 with Zen, make sure you follow and subscribe on Spotify, Apple or whatever platform you're listening on. Hello and welcome to 10 with Zen with your host, Helen Woodward. Today, my guest is Jonathan Coy, CEO of Head Teacher Chat. Jonathan has a background in primary headship and now, having followed that, the CEO of Head Teacher Chat. So, Jonathan, we had a Twitter direct messaging about questions and what we were going to talk about today. So, I'm really interested to hear what inspired you in the first instance to set up Head Teacher Chat. Where did the idea come from? Yeah, um, yeah, great to be here. Um, thanks for inviting me. It started about 10 years ago that we started up on Twitter and we really wanted to find about a lot more information. We we're very curious as leaders in schools and we started being on Twitter and starting asking questions. And I was a senior leader at the time, I wasn't a head teacher. So I started posting questions online and getting loads of responses. And it all started to really take off when we started getting in contact with Dame Alison Peacock. And we thought, wow, this is incredible. Here we are in Norfolk talking to one of the leading educationalists in the country about yeah. the challenge approach to teaching. And she responded and she got back to us and she asked us loads of questions. And it led for Lucy, my wife, being part of one of her books and doing a whole chapter in the book. And we thought, actually, this is a powerful mechanism that we could use to help support school leaders. So that's how it all started. And it started growing from there. And in many ways, our aim is to support school leaders, head teachers in school, because we know they have a troubling time. We want to give them an access, a voice to actually broadcast on Twitter to help them find all different things like products, services, new resources, a whole range of things. We also got the planners, which also helped out. But that was the aim. It was to support as many people as we can. Okay, that's that's really helpful. And uh, one of the things I really love about your Twitter account, actually, is that it is by and large really positive, not so positive that it avoids the brutal facts. And you do ask some very pertinent questions and you ask a lot of questions on behalf of other people as well, don't you? Yeah, most evenings we have three or four questions from head teachers that we put onto the platform to help them out on things. We had um, some really good questions over the weekend. Good in some ways, but in other ways, um, yeah, quite a reflection on what a head teacher's role at the moment. One was saying, okay, what should I do? I'm, I'm struggling as a head teacher and six weeks in, I'm not sure if this is the right choice. And there was a load of support from people that was basically saying, okay, have you tried this? Have you tried this? Maybe look at getting a coach or something. So Twitter is very powerful in that supported um, network and that's what we try and foster what we're doing. But we have a whole range of questions. We have what interview questions, we have questions about tutoring projects, we have questions about sports premium. We have a whole, whole range of different questions across the platform. If someone's asking that question, there'll be someone else out there who will be asking the same question and we feel that if we can pull it out and help one or two people, then we've done something good to help people out. Okay, so you've built really a very supportive community Community network, but it's based on that Socratic questioning approach and reaching out to the community for the answers and the support. And they step up, don't they? They do. Yeah, incredible. In the last couple of days, some of the questions have really done very well. That was our aim. We want to help head teachers. I was a head teacher for four years and it was quite a lonely job. So where do you go for your supportive network? And actually, in schools, there's not many people you can go to. So we tried to put that platform on Twitter that we could be that network for people. In the background, we're trying to do a lot of work to actually support them. So that we're always checking up on people. We're always sort of like um, making sure they're okay. We want them to do well. So we're trying to help them out as best as possible. So there's, there is that side of it, which we don't show on Twitter that much. But actually, we are there to help people. Uh, that's good to know. And I didn't know that about you, actually. So that's that's really lovely to hear. I wanted to ask you as well about the review of services work that you do. I was thinking about this earlier, and I, I think the time in my career when I had the most sort of unsolicited emails and phone calls was when I was head of early years. And I mean, at the time, a lot of it was paper-based, some of it was email-based, but I, a lot of it ended up in the round filing cabinet next to my desk, you know, yeah. and it, it was kind of constant, really. And it was really hard to know 
who was offering something that was genuinely going to be useful that would help us solve a problem and who was actually just adding clutter to our lives and it was actually quite difficult trying to differentiate that and sometimes you know a colleague would recommend something that actually was going to solve a whole heap of problems for you and you were just lucky because somebody mentioned it but tell us about the work that you do because this is quite a passion for you isn't it really oh yeah well as a head teacher i'm very time poor and so i'm always looking for improvements and trying to get the best out of what we've got and we set up the edu network to hopefully help head teachers out because we go out and find products that we feel are going to be benefit to the schools so we then talk to the companies about the products and we find out actually how they work what is the background behind it does it actually help the school and we then present it on our edu network because i know that it's, i didn't have a chance to find out all the companies out there that can offer things. And it was, it's sort of like um, someone was saying to me the other day, it's like a car with square wheels. So like you've got something in school that you're using, you've been using for 10 years, it works, it does the job, okay, but actually there's someone out there who's offering the circle wheels to the car. But to get the circle wheels in, you've got to trust that people that are saying this is a really good product. You also got to trust the people who are going to fit the car. And actually you've got a whole load of change modeling that you have to do to put it in place to get it working. Yeah. And yeah. then it's got to work. And so we try and do that brokering and saying, actually, this is a really good product. This will, will help your school by doing this, this, this. And this is what other schools have said about it. And I don't think there's anyone else that does it quite like us at the moment. So we're trying to just support people with selecting new products and new services. There's some great services out there. Absolutely yeah. brilliant companies out there that 18, 19 months ago, I would have never heard of. And they wouldn't be on my radar. So that's basically what it is. And even some of the bigger companies are offering great things out there. And it's just their new product that people just don't have time to find out about. Okay. And one of the things I like that you mentioned in there is what I've come to understand from a psychologist friend is the switch cost. So actually understanding that there is a cost when you decide you're going to switch. So you've really got to be clear that what you're switching into is worth that initial cost to you. Okay. Yeah. And there's also the cost for, it's not just a monetary cost, it's the emotional cost of changing to a new system that people have never seen before and and the change management that has to happen in schools at the moment people are less reliant on changing things but actually these services and products could actually really improve their school in okay. a short amount yeah. of time it's just putting it in place and how you put it in place okay so let me ask you a quality assurance question are there companies and services that approach you who you decline to put on the platform having reviewed the product yeah we um we only put on things that we have reviewed and we recommend to go in school. That's our integrity and actually you can trust what we're doing. Um, we have smaller companies and sometimes they can't get out into the education world because it's a very fierce and competitive mm. world out there. And actually we want to also support them. So we talk to them, we discuss their products, we go through their product and actually make a decision on what the product they have before they, we go on to recommending on our um, edge network. Because sometimes um, there can be blocks from other companies and other systems out there. And actually, we want to help people. Okay, that's, that's helpful to understand. So talk me through from a, from a new head teacher perspective in particular, for instance, because new heads, I think it's tough this time in particular, isn't it? I mean, really tough. So if I'm a new head teacher in a school and I'm asking questions about some of the existing services, I might be doing a bit of a value for money and best value review of what's going on. What, what help could you offer me and how would I approach you? What should I do? Well, we had one question the other day, which was very similar. It was a new head teacher who's gone into a school and this whole server system is broken. And they came to us and said, ah, what, what can I do? And so we immediately said, OK, we've got three companies here that will help you out. And we signposted them to that, that company. We don't, we're not a broker in the sense of that part. Talk to them, see what they say about it and see if they can help you. So that's a very immediate thing we can do. Other things is on Twitter, we're always posting up questions about things. And sometimes the companies, um, we do quite a lot of questions about pupil premium. At the moment, it's quite an interesting one. The tutoring project is very interesting at the moment, and that's been raised up there. And so we raised the questions, and then actually we help people being signposted to the people that would answer those questions and so we do that one and we also promote on twitter as well so we all the ones we recommend we will do tweets and posts and saying have you seen this one 
We're doing a couple of webinars in the next couple of weeks on parental engagement, and we're doing about how to use maths in a physical way. And we also are doing a webinar on, it's called My School Year. It's basically a calendar. It's from School Bus, but they actually populated a calendar for the whole school year already. It's free to charge. It's brilliant. And they took all the DFE information of key dates, all the Ofsted key dates in, all the big organisational key dates of in it, and they populate one big calendar so you can keep on track. And if they change it, you get the updated version of it. Okay, okay. Which so is quite interesting. Uh, yeah, for yeah. me, as a head teacher, that would have been okay because I'm always searching DFE sites to find out where the um, the dates are and when I'm meant to be returning things and, and it's all in one place. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, so for listeners who are interested in posting a question or having you post a question, because you do it, you'll do it anonymously as well for people, won't you? Which is really helpful, actually. So if somebody wants to post a question, Jonathan, following this podcast, can they DM you or what can they do? Yeah, they can do it on different ways. So on Twitter, they can DM me on Twitter. We've got a Facebook group, so you can direct message on Facebook. That's becoming more and more popular now. And um, we try to do that question in the next couple of days. So it should be things. If you DM us and you want it anonymous, say you want it anonymous, and then we will post it for you. And um, hopefully they'll get a lot of traction and a lot of response from our followers. Okay, that's that's really helpful to hear. Um, so Jonathan, it's been brilliant to talk with you today. I always find it interesting to, to hear about what you're doing and what you're reviewing and, and what the latest questions are. For our listeners, we always follow up our podcast with a transcript, including key links to help you find out more. So, Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's been great. No, oh, it's been great. And to our listeners, thank you very much for joining us on 10 with Zen. 10 with Zen is brought to you by Zen Educate. Zen Educate's online platform puts you in control of supply and recruitment, and they've saved UK schools over £3 million by allowing them to connect with teachers and TAs directly. To receive 50% off your first day booked with Zen, just DM us on Twitter at Zen Educate and quote 10 with Zen. Thanks for listening.